We've talked lots about scalars and vectors so far, and we've established that distance is a scalar quantity, while displacement is a vector quantity. Speed is a scalar quantity, which is based on distance, and velocity is a vector quantity, which is based on displacement. Our newest addition here is acceleration. An acceleration is a vector quantity, and it's based on velocity. While velocity is the rate of change of displacement, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Our equation for calculating acceleration is as follows. A equals delta V over delta T. If we compare it with our equation for velocity, we'll see that they're pretty darn similar. When we say that velocity is the rate of change of displacement, we simply take displacement and we divide it by the change in time. In the same way, when we say that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, we take our change in velocity and we divide it by the change in time. A very similar idea. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement, that is how fast the displacement is changing. Acceleration is the rate of change in velocity, in that how fast velocity is changing. Acceleration is a little more difficult to visualize. Rather than reading the speedometer in a car, acceleration is more how fast the speedometer readout or needle is changing. At this point, you deserve a congratulations. You've entered into second order rates. This is really getting into second order derivatives and calculus, an advanced branch of mathematics. So well done. If you can get the concept of acceleration clear in your head at this point, you're laughing in that you've already established yourself nicely in both physics and calculus concepts. This is the land of Isaac Newton, certainly one of the greatest intellects in human history. So nicely done. So let's do an acceleration example. While skiing, Hannah starts down a hill from rest. After 20 seconds, she's going 30 kilometers per hour. What was her average acceleration during this run? First of all, let's get some things we know listed down here. The initial velocity, well, let's see, she started from rest, so VI would have to be zero. The final velocity, VF, is 30 kilometers per hour. The initial and final time, well, we can just say that delta t, the change in time, is 20 seconds. That is the time of the trip we're considering here. Now we could just jump into the equation, but first of all, let's take a quick look at the units. We have a mix of units here. We have kilometers and hours and seconds. Now, what we want in our final answer for units is always a bit of a question. If there's some way of indicating what units are best in the final answer, then great. Maybe a multiple choice and you see what units are being used. Otherwise, it's good practice to produce your answer in the standard SI units. That is, units that involve only meters and seconds. So, let's do a unit conversion here. The 30 kilometers per hour could be changed into meters per second then everything else would be meters and seconds. Again, we know that there is 1,000 meters in a kilometer, and we want to cancel out the kilometers because we want to be left with meters. So we'll put the one kilometer on the bottom and the 1,000 meters on the top. Now for the time, we know that there's 3,600 seconds in an hour, so we have the hour on the bottom here, so to cancel it, we'll put the hour on the top here, and that leaves the 3600 seconds on the bottom. The kilometers cancel out, perfect, and we're left with meters for our final answer, excellent. The hours, now they cancel out, and again, we're left with seconds on the bottom, perfect. It confirms that we set up the conversions correctly. So now we can pull out the calculator and 30 times 1,000, because the 1,000 is on top, and then we'll divide by 3,600, because the 3,600 is on the bottom, and we're left with 
8.33 meters per second with a little rounding. So 30 kilometers per hour changed to standard units is the exact same as 8.33 meters per second. Okay, so back to our question. Now we have all of our units all cleared up and it's time to pull out our equation. A equals delta V over delta T would do nicely. Our delta T was 20 seconds. Our delta V is the change in velocity and we went from 0 to 8.3 meters per second. So the delta V or V final minus V initial is 8.3 meters per second. And we divide these and with a little rounding we get 0 0.42. Now what about the units here? We have meters per second on the top and seconds on the bottom. And if we combine these, it gives us meters per second squared. That is two seconds on the bottom. The units for displacement is kilometers or meters or something showing length. The units for velocity are those units of length over time because it's the rate. So for example, meters per second or kilometers per hour. And then the units for acceleration are the length unit on top, that is the meters or kilometers or what have you, but two time units on the bottom. For example, meters on the top and two second units on the bottom, and we call that seconds squared. So meters per second squared is a very common acceleration unit. Let's try another example. Ethan is riding his bike and tries to pass a friend. He accelerates at 0 0.2 meters per second squared for 20 seconds and passes his friend while doing 12 meters per second. What was his original velocity before the acceleration? Okay, so let's first list what we know here. We see the given acceleration A is 0 0.2 meters per second squared. Now note that if we ever get mixed up with what's what, acceleration is easy to recognize just by looking at the units. Two time units on the bottom is a great double check that we're looking at an acceleration. And yes, 0 0.2 meters per second squared is definitely our acceleration. What else do we know? We see that the time of his acceleration is 20 seconds. So we can say delta t is 20 seconds. Now the 12 meters per second in the question is definitely a velocity. Note that the units are velocity units, meters per second. Now it says that he's doing 12 meters per second at the time of the pass or at the end of his acceleration. So this must be his final velocity. So let's list VF equals 12 meters per second. And that leaves VI, his initial velocity, as our unknown. And in fact, what we're supposed to find. Checking our units at this point is a great idea, so we take a look and everything is in meters and seconds, which is a bonus in that there's no conversions to do here. So let's go for the equation. We're looking for an acceleration equation in the form of solving for a velocity, so this one will do nicely. Delta V equals A times delta T. So let's plug in what we know here. We multiply 0 0.2 meters per second squared by 20 seconds, and we get 4 meters per second. And we can stop here and just quick check of the units. The second on the top here cancels out one of the seconds on the bottom. So we're looking good in that the units here would be meters per second, which are the standard velocity units. So the change in velocity is 4 meters per second. Now we might be tempted to stop there and write this down as our answer, but let's double check that we have it solved completely. We're asked for the original velocity, and thus far we solve for delta v, which is the change in velocity. So this one's a little tricky in that we have a little more to do here. We know that delta v is the change in velocity. We could say vf minus vi. We can rearrange it, and so our initial velocity could be Vf minus our delta V, or 12 meters per second minus 4 meters per second would give us 8 meters per second. So let's stop and see if that makes sense. 
if his initial velocity was 8 meters per second, he was cycling along at 8 meters per second, went for the pass, so he poured it on, and his change in velocity was plus 4 meters per second. That means he accelerated up, increased his velocity by 4 meters per second. And so his total velocity by the time he finished that was 12 meters per second. Yeah, that makes sense. In this tutorial, we looked at acceleration, the rate of change of velocity. We recognized acceleration as a vector quantity, just like displacement and velocity, having magnitude and direction. We also learned how to calculate acceleration. We used the equation A equals delta V over delta T. We also noticed that the equation looks pretty similar to our velocity equation, both involving a rate, or divide by delta T. We solved a couple of acceleration problems and recognized the need to take a look at the units, and we may have to convert. And finally, we learned how to recognize acceleration by its units. When displacements might be in meters, velocity are commonly in meters per second or kilometers per hour, accelerations have the length unit on top and two time units on the bottom. For example, a meters on the top and a second squared on the bottom. 